I hate Americans and I hate America. This is a honey bun, it's not even a donut. So Ariana Grande's whole career trajectory has been pretty impressive. She started out as a child actor and was able to break out of that mold fairly quickly with a distinct and polished catalog of pop music and various era aesthetics. Plus, there's no denying that she can actually sing. I've always liked Ariana's music a lot, in particular Thank You Next is one of my favorite albums, but I've never had any kind of real stan attachment to her beyond that. I feel like we know quite a bit about her life through who she's dated, and she's definitely told that story through her music, but she seems to let her music speak for herself a lot of the time. Ariana has gotten herself into a number of controversies over the years, which depending on the type of person you are, may or may not have turned you off to her as an artist. But the girl makes bops, and at the end of the day, that usually says more than any tabloid headline or think piece ever could. However, Ariana is back with some new music following, probably her biggest controversy of all time, and this is the first time I've seen the criticism of her personal life overtake the art. And we're going to break all of that down today. But before we get started with all of that, I did want to tell you guys about today's wonderful sponsor, Rocket Money. I live in New York City, which means I naturally spend $30 every time I step outside. And not only that, but I've had trouble with piling up random subscriptions over the years. And Rocket Money has been a game changer in helping me manage all of my finances from the top down. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, make a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. I mentioned it a little bit up top, but my favorite thing about Rocket Money is that it provides a way for you to identify safely and securely the amount of recurring charges that you see in your bank account, and from there you can use that to eliminate unwanted subscriptions. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls or anything like that. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. I also like using the budget features, which allow you to analyze your spending habits to create a custom budget that works with your lifestyle. You can automatically monitor your spending by category and get notifications when you've exceeded your limits. So what are you waiting for? Get a chance to take control of your finances today. You can use my code rocketmoney.com slash Kayla says to get started for free. That is rocketmoney.com slash Kayla says. And thank you so much to our friends at Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. So Ariana Grande got her start in the entertainment industry on Broadway before becoming a prolific child actor starring as Cat Valentine on the hit show Victorious and later Sam and Cat. Say what you want about the character. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. But in a show that put a lot of emphasis on performance and singing abilities, it was clear that Ariana was beautiful and she could definitely carry a tune more so than some other folks on that show. Okay, that's true. One thing you don't know about Ariana Grande is that she literally sings everything. Like yes. she's, she's starting to forget how to talk in her own voice because she sings everything. And it's a good thing because she's a beautiful voice, but it's awesome. She sings absolutely everything. She never stops. That's so true, Liz. You sing a lot too. Like, I, especially during the we all sing. Cat Valentine was the people's princess, although it is now commonly believed that Ariana may have exhibited a little bit of diva behavior on set around that time. According to co-star Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, Jeanette explains that she had a little bit of jealousy toward Ariana while her music career was taking off, but also tells a story about how Jeanette was going to have an opportunity to direct an episode of Sam and Cat that was taken away, and it's implied that Ariana may have had something to do with it. But that has never been directly confirmed, and it seems that Jeanette and Ariana are on better terms now. Fast forward a little bit and Ariana releases her debut album called Yours Truly. It's a very doo-wop inspired album. It takes a lot of inspiration from Mariah Carey. There's nothing particularly edgy about it, but it does have some really good tracks, especially The Way featuring Mac Miller, Tattooed Heart, and Baby Eye. Her career then skyrocketed later on in the 2010s with one of the defining albums of 2014, My Everything, which featured tracks like Break Free, Problem, and you can tell that song is from 2014 because it has a saxophone phone solo and Iggy Azalea for some reason. And this is around the time that Bang Bang came out and that song was just unstoppable. Ariana had her first main controversy in 2015 and I've already alluded to it, but yes, we of course have to talk about Donut Gate. There had been tabloid-like rumors around this time that Ariana was exhibiting diva-like behavior at award shows and to journalists during interviews, and that reputation sort of solidified itself when TMZ revealed security footage of Ariana in a donut shop with some friends in which she appeared to lick a donut on a display tray and then proclaim something a little bizarre. It was just like really rude to me. 
Employee Myra Solis, seen here on the video in a red shirt helping the girl believed to be Grande, says she helped the pop star pick out $5 worth of donuts on the night of July 4th. And she was like, I just need a donut uh, professional. I was just like, okay. When Solis comes back to the counter with a tray of donuts, in this clip from TMZ, listen to what Grande says. Ariana later apologized for this, claiming that she is in fact proud to be an American and basically that she was trying to express frustration about the obesity epidemic in this country, especially in kids, and essentially that her statement was taken out of context. And I do agree with that. It was probably a statement that made more sense if you were in the room joking around with her. And most people chalk this up to just general immaturity because she was like 22 at the time. I still think that's a little too much of a cop out, but it goes without saying that she emerged from that controversy basically unscathed. And following Donut Gate, Ariana emerged with her version of what I'd like to call the I'm not a kid anymore phase Dangerous Woman. So Dangerous Woman is definitely more of an edgy album than Ariana's last two previous album entries. It has a lot of notable singles like Into You, Dangerous Woman, The Song, Side to Side, uh, Greedy, I'll put the Valentina meme here for people who know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's not my favorite Ariana Grande album personally, but I do feel like it's one of the more iconic ones. Like when you think of Ariana, this is probably what you think of. I guess it's also worth a brief mention that Ariana really gained a lot of goodwill from a horrible situation at one of her concerts in England, which was the target of a terrorist attack, which is terrible. And I remember at the time there was like a weird sect of Twitter blaming her for it, which is nuts. But eventually she finished the tour, she raised a lot of money for the families of those victims, and then 2017 capped off with her being named Artist of the Year by Billboard. So Sweetener came out toward the beginning of 2018, and it's fine. It's not my favorite Ariana album. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to find an Ariana fan whose favorite album it is, but I'm sure plenty of you are out there and you'll let me know in the comments down below. I feel like Sweetener kind of gets overshadowed by Ariana's next project that we're gonna talk about, and that is Thank You Next. Thank You Next came out at the tail end of 2018 in a time where I personally really needed it. It's a really great pop album about not only a breakup, but also finding love in new ways. And it's also Ariana's most personality driven album. And I'll elaborate on that a little bit. So I haven't talked about Ariana's love life specifically until this point, uh, and that's because on Thank You Next, the album, that's the time where she really decided to address the speculation about her love life head on. Uh, she's known in Hollywood as someone to have had a lot of partners, many of them famous, and in Thank You Next, the song, uh, she addresses a lot of that speculation uh, in like a tongue-in-cheek way. In the beginning of the song, she references her exes Big Sean, Ricky Alvarez, Mac Miller, and Pete Davidson. It's also worth noting here that this was like around the time that that Pete Davidson Ariana discourse was at its all time peak because it used to be novel that like Ariana Grande was Ariana Grande and she was dating somebody like Pete Davidson who the ongoing joke was that like he, you know, she was out of his league. But you know, the song and the whole point of the album has always been like, you know, I dated all of these people, I have all these exes, but they all kind of taught me something along the way, and that's what I'm going to take into my newest relationship. And I think that was well received for most of Thank You Next. Uh, for me personally, like, it has a lot of bangers on it. Um, people kind of like the fact that she addressed all of these relationships in a very tongue-in-cheek sort of way, which she also did for the visuals on the album as well. But as we'll see going forward, that strategy does not always work for her. It's also worth noting here that this was the peak of criticism of Ariana for a practice known as blackfishing. Basically, Ariana is a white woman and it's been a long running joke that she styles herself and models her aesthetic after whichever culture or demographic will make her the most money at that time. Her music video Seven Rings was criticized for stealing from elements of black culture and black music, while she was also rocking a spray tan to make her appear darker than she actually was. A few years later, she was also accused of Asian fishing, making her skin appear lighter than it actually was, while also employing makeup and posing techniques to appear more akin to, say, popular K-pop stars. She also reportedly tattooed the phrase seven rings on her hand in Japanese, but what it actually translates to is barbecue grill. This lack of self-awareness is harmful because Ariana as a white woman has the privilege of being able to claim and reclaim certain aesthetics when it benefits her, similarly to how Miley Cyrus was making trap and rap music for a while before shedding that whole era and assimilating to the clean girl aesthetic that's popular right now. This article by Alicia Khan, which I'll link in the description down below, puts it best. It is notable that during an event like her wedding, 
which is the ultimate metaphor for feminine purity and white womanhood in the US, she would revert to her natural appearance for her big day. This seemingly sends the message that her fascination with black and Asian cultures is only for commodification when it's time for her to make money and build her career. Meanwhile, personal milestones can be represented by her white womanhood. So on with the timeline here, in 2020, Ariana started dating and later got married to Dalton Gomez, which coincided with the release of her album Positions, which is a horny album about fucking and sex and other forms of hetero debauchery, and it's good. I like this album. But people kind of thought the story with Ariana's dating life would end with this era. She was married now, and with the announcement of her casting as Glinda in the Wicked live action film, people were like, oh, this is her crossover into film era, it's happening, she's Lady Gaga-ing, it's happening, it's all coming together, and then something wildly unexpected occurred. Okay, so the first thing I want to say about the Wicked movie is that I think it's a conspiracy. I don't think it's ever coming out. I think it's a money laundering project. I will believe it when my ass is in the chair watching either the trailer or the actual movie itself. I feel like it's going to get delayed until like 2030. Uh, I just, I cannot believe that it's coming out. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that like, I guess this is pretty irrelevant, but it's just my own personal uh, opinion here. I don't think Wicked is going to work as a movie or two movies as they're planning the installments of it currently. I think it barely works as a musical. Don't get me wrong, it does. It does work as a musical, but like, it just meets the threshold of functioning as a musical. I don't think it's going to translate as well on the big screen. Anyway, the third thing that I want to mention about the Wicked movie is that that is guaranteed to be a cast of mostly theater kids and a crew probably of mostly theater kids. And all of that theater kid energy on one set, there is bound to be some mess. In July of last year, it was confirmed that Ariana Grande had separated from her husband, Dalton Gomez. And we didn't get to know that much about him, so there wasn't a reason to speculate that something was going on behind the scenes until it was revealed that Ariana, presumably on the set of Wicked, began hooking up with Wicked co-star Ethan Slater, who was cast as Fierro in the film. Bach. He was, he was cast as Bach. I don't know why I said Fierro. That's literally not what I wrote down. I knew it was Bach. Uh, he's, he's Bach. Fuck. And if you put those timelines together, it is reasonable to assume that there was some crossover there with Ariana's marriage. Not only that, but Ethan was married with a newborn baby at this time. It's also worth noting that if you're asking yourself, who is Ethan Slater? What has he been in prior to this mess? Well, if nautical nonsense be something you wish... And so the prophecy goes, Ariana left her husband to pursue Spongebob from Spongebob the Musical, who happens to bear striking resemblance to her brother Frankie Grande, and who presumably decided to leave his wife and young child to be with her. A story with lots of meme potential, just because he looks kinda goofy and Ariana is Ariana, that part of it is basically the Pete Davidson discourse repackaged. We've been here before, and this was enough to get people to turn on Miss Grande. Not Donut Gate not the black fishing, not the diva behavior, this. And let's talk about why. I mean, I guess I'll start by saying that I don't really like bringing any kind of personal relationship or family stuff into these videos if I can avoid it. Just because while celebrities are public people, there are often people behind the scenes involved in these kinds of things who are more private and don't deserve to have their private life be debated like this. I also think that most of the time relationships are not the kind of thing that need to be debated by strangers, whether the people involved are famous or not. But when it comes to Ariana's current situation, this is the thing that everyone is talking about about, and so we have to break down why it's rubbing so many people the wrong way. Now, I don't exactly think it's the hottest of takes to claim that Ariana and Ethan's actions here are really shitty objectively. And while we do see this kind of thing play out in Hollywood all the time, I think when it comes to Ariana specifically, this served as a final straw of sorts for a lot of people. Because Ariana strikes me as a celebrity who has never had to take quote-unquote accountability for any of the problematic things she may have done in her past. 
and is often kind of hidden behind this, you know, facade of innocence or playing ignorant to whatever situation she finds herself in. But I think this whole issue is quite frankly too adult for people to ignore. Especially because there's a kid involved, you know, Ethan Slater had a baby when this was all going on. Like, even if you personally don't feel like it's a big deal because celebrities do this kind of shit all the time, I do get why it's not exactly playing well for her right now. So Ariana remained pretty silent about this whole controversy until recently when she released her new single Yes And, which we'll talk about. And I think she tried to sort of take the thank you next strategy here, where she addressed the criticism and controversy surrounding her in a sort of tongue in cheek way. And that worked during Thank You Next, but I think because of the optics and the severity of this particular controversy that she finds herself in, people are not buying into it as much this time around. Okay, so I listened to Yes And, and I don't know, I feel about it the way I've always felt about Ariana's music. It's very emblematic of the pop style that's popular right now. I see a lot of Beyonce's Renaissance influence there. It sounds a little bit like house music. It's fine, I kinda like it, but it's also crazy how people are acting like it's the worst shit they've ever heard in their life because they're still mad about the Ethan Slater thing. It's just really interesting to me because I feel like this would have been received so differently had this controversy not happened, but also it's kind of Ariana's fault because this song is a direct response to her critics. And if you're gonna do that, it has to be, you know, the song of the summer and yes and certainly isn't that. I guess I do want to point out that one line everyone got so heated about, why do you care whose dick I ride? And she knows why you care. She understands the parasocial relationship she has with her fans, but something about that line is so painfully self-aware because it's going to enrage some people and others are going to just go, yes, yeah, slay, cunty, the house down boots, queen, problematic fave. I end up saying this in a lot of How the Internet episodes, but ultimately your current opinion of Ariana Grande outside of her music depends entirely on the kind of person you are, what you value, whether or not you can separate the art from the artist, and whether or not you even need to do that in this case. This this is a wealthy white woman home wrecking and being cheeky about it because somebody probably told her it was the most profitable way to go about her messiness. I think weirdly enough, this is all about celebrity worship and power at the end of the day. Because she's going about this whole controversy in a very different way than say somebody like Taylor Swift, whose fans were able to bully her out of a problematic relationship. And I think some fans are frustrated they can't make the little Ariana Grande voodoo doll do what they want it to do, which is to be unproblematic or be problematic in a way that they feel more comfortable defending. And when it comes to Ariana specifically, I don't think her behavior is going to change unless it begins to affect her bottom line. And even then, I feel like you have to speed run ruining your reputation far worse than this for anything like that to happen. I mean, Doja Cat managed to do it, but it took her a lot of her own personal self-destruction and alienation of her diehard fans to get to that point. I think Ariana is still in a lane where she has enough people willing to buy her music because at the end of the day, Capital moves mountains, and Stan Twitter inadvertently moves money into Elon Musk's bank account. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Let me know who you would like me to profile for the February episode of How the Internet Fell Out of Love. If you are new here, this is a monthly series that I do and it's pretty popular, so we're gonna keep doing it. By the way, you can also follow me on social media. Uh, I have this beautiful link tree that's also in the description down below. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Letterboxd. I'm on all kinds of things that you can find me on, so definitely go check me out there. Everybody stay warm out there. Uh, maybe don't do that trend that people are doing on TikTok where they like make ice cream out of snow. Like maybe don't do that. Uh, eat your vegetables, uh, stay in school, and I'll see you next time. And by the way, I just wanted to remind y'all that you can go down to the description down below, uh, use my code to get started on Rocket Money for free, and thank you so much again to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video.